If your diesel engine has low power, or maybe your truck is struggling going up a hill, or maybe it's hesitating going down the road, come over here. All right, welcome everyone to my YouTube channel. Today we are working on a 2012 Ford F750. As you saw in the previous clip, it's got a Cummins ISB engine. For those who don't know, yes, some Ford F750s and medium duty trucks come with the Cummins engine. You know, a lot of people have been commenting on some of my short videos. When they see a Ford Super Duty interior, and then they see a Cummins engine, they're like, Cummins and a Ford? Yes, sir, on the medium duty trucks, that was an option. For those who don't know. Anyways, customer complaint on this one, it's got low power, check engine light is on. So first step, I'm gonna hook up my J-Pro Diagnostic Service Kit. You guys want more information on this scan tool? I'll have the Norigon website down in the description down below. It's a question a lot of people ask me, what scan tool are you using? So this is what I'm using today. J-Pro Diagnostic Service Kit. Now this is the fault code we're going to be focusing on, EGR system fault. Normally we see a EGR low flow code, but as you can see here, this one's actually an EGR high flow. And as mentioned here on JPRO's fault guidance, this fault code comes active whenever the measured EGR flow is higher than commanded. And here's a few things that can trigger the fault code. EGR differential pressure sensor ports are leaking or plugged up or the EGR valve itself can be stuck open. For those who don't know, this is where the components are located on this Cummins ISB engine. Right here on the driver's side of the engine, EGR valve and the EGR differential pressure sensor. And I'm gonna go ahead and go straight after the EGR valve because notice this snapshot. There we can see on the snapshot that the EGR valve command was at 0% and our EGR differential pressure was over three pounds. That's telling us we most likely have an EGR valve that's sticking. Let me take you under the engine compartment and I'll show you what I found. If you notice, the EGR valve looks fairly new, like it's already been replaced. EGR differential pressure sensor was not too bad. It's not plugged up. Check out the EGR valve. It's all plugged up. Is this the reason they replaced it the first time? Most likely. And check out the mixer housing. It's also plugged up. So what should we do? Clean the EGR valve? Clean the mixer housing? Send it all this way? No sir, if we would have done that, it would have came back doing the same thing. The reason it keeps plugging up, because the EGR cooler is leaking. Now during this video, the engine had already been torn apart for a couple of days, so it's already dry. But notice this clip from one of my short videos. This check was made right after a road test. We can see coolant residue. So the EGR cooler is leaking coolant internally, causing everything to get plugged up. So the fix on this one, I'm going to replace the EGR cooler, the EGR valve, clean the mixer housing. Stay tuned. Start off by removing the air cleaner. It's got two air ducts and four bolts holding it down. Just like that. I have the air cleaner bracket bolts removed. Let's remove the bracket. All right, now we got a lot more space. I've got the coolant drain. Now let's start removing the EGR cooler. I'm gonna speed it up super fast. Right now I'm removing the coolant pipes. Now I'm removing the EGR cooler mounting bolts. And I already have the exhaust manifold to EGR cooler bolts off. The two of them in the back. Now let's lift off the EGR cooler. There we can see the EGR cooler outlet. It's face plug. Imagine what it looks like deep inside. For those who are interested in part numbers, here's the part number I'm using for the EGR cooler kit. It comes with the EGR cooler and all the associated gaskets and O-rings. Alright, so before installing the new EGR cooler, I'm going to replace all of these O-rings. Then I'll lube them up and install the EGR cooler. Check it out, no pick needed. I'm going to clean up the grooves, then I'll install the new O-rings. This is what I'm using to lube up the O-rings. Makes the installation process go smoothly. I'm gonna fish the EGR cooler in there. Now that I'm looking at it, I could have removed the air cleaner duct, but then this job wouldn't have been as challenging. And I like challenges. <laughs> we 
but that's gonna be it for the installation just nuts and bolts you guys get the picture all right got the new egr valve installed clean the mixer housing got the new egr cooler installed and also replaced the air filter now let's go see how she does all right here's a snapshot comparison the before and the after egr valve is closed notice the egr differential pressure and notice the difference between the two three and zero pounds now that's more like it lastly i'm going to run a regen then i'm going to road test it no other problems i'll release the unit that's gonna be it for this video guys hope you enjoyed it hope it was helpful catch you on the next one